Erin, great to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. Um, congratulations on your involvement in the Head Bombs campaign. This is amazing. It's amazing because it's fun in the sense that it's gory and it is anarchic and I think we stand a chance of engaging more kids and yeah. that's what this is all about and um, still uh, I uh, am dumbfounded that um, children struggle with the pressures of, of resilience and they mightn't have a person to talk to and so that's why this is so valid because I think as we all know from different generations kids tend to live in their heads yeah um, and to compound that even more, they, they now live in their handsets. It is really and tough, so isn't it? it's its own language, social media. Yeah. But if that is the world that they know, it is definitely the world that they live in um, through lack of choice and technological advancement. This is the way that we draw their attention. Well, I suppose one thing hasn't changed in all, mm-hmm. like, all through the years. You know, mm-hmm. we have all this technology and stuff, mm-hmm. but it is talking that really makes us stronger. Yes, and, it, and it's seen as an exotic thing because I think, you know, you can sit in the same room as somebody, but you're actually conversing via social media yeah. and you forget to use your words and find your voice. But that is just so imperative in the world um, to find that and actually use it and... and to try and put it to good use. <laughs> you came from a big family. So how did you get your voice heard as a youngster? Well, I guess I was a sort of classic middle child. and That's a tough position to be in. It kind of... It, do you know what it was? It, I, my personality as a child was sort of based off of what my older sister and my younger sister weren't. It's almost like you, you take what's left... <laughs> And I spent a lot of time outside the house actually doing different hobbies and activities and sports and whatnot. But um, it was only when I started to leave home that I really started to come together and have a bit more self-awareness. Because actually, on the flip side, the beauty of having a big family is that you take everything for granted because there's always yeah. someone there. And I'm, I was keenly aware of that when all of a sudden nobody was there. How did you cope with that? Because, you know, it's not even like you went to some really quiet little city in a quiet job. No. You went to London, you went to the fashion world. We think it's all glamorous, but it's yeah. got to be tough. I think it's inadvertently insecurity enhancing because mm-hmm. it's new territory, but it's also fast paced and it's shared publicly. So if that ain't pressure, I don't know what it is. <laughs> But um, for me, it was just day by day, and I had a very um, interesting, kind of unique access to the industry when I dipped in because there was a whole wash of rebellion around this idea of aesthetic ideals, and it was more character and personality based. And, and I was actually really, really ready to let that unleash yeah. in a medium. I didn't know I had it in me. So that was actually incredibly liberating because I think that. I would base more of my job on acting than than modelling. I'm not quite sure what that really entails. It's a different experience yeah. for different women in those different genres. As an 18, 19-year-old, when you're trying to figure out who you are as a person, mm. how tough is that to figure out your sense of self Incredibly. in the modelling world? I'm not anti-modelling, but, but what I am anti is, is underage modelling, and yeah. that's why I reinforced the um, importance of bringing in an age limit. Uh, so legally, models are not allowed legally to work under the age of 16. And there are two really important reasons for that. The first being that um, they are children under the age of 16 and the pressures they face are responsibilities they shouldn't have to take care of. They haven't connected with themselves and they're portraying other people and there's a lot of people involved in that. And it's shared very publicly and globally. Mm -hmm. The second is grown women trying to emulate themselves on, on girls that are not yet fully formed in mind and body um, problems arise with that there's an unrealistic expectation to, to compare and to contrast and, and to judge and I'm so over all of that the self-criticism, there's enough people out there that are going to do it for you if you let them so with this campaign it's about giving kids the tools to experience the empowerment of resilience and self-preservation to just allow them to live their lives. I love all of that because it is something that sometimes Mm. we struggle with, just the self-preservation, but also the confidence to speak up for ourselves. I heard you in an interview say, you didn't name the fashion house, nor do I expect you to Mm -hmm. name it now, 
but you know you was, you said you were sitting there and someone came up to you and slapped you on the bum and mm. said oh you've put on a bit of weight mm. there mm. you need to lose the weight you turned around and said why don't you make pants that fit me yeah <laughs> where did that confidence come from because that's what an, a level we should all aim to be at well it's not confidence for me it wasn't at the time but it was establishing an important boundary yeah. and I didn't worry so much about losing the gig I worried more about leaving that building without my dignity intact and that to me um, will lead me through the rest of my life and I have no guarantee how long my job will last. I was going to ask you what's the best piece of advice you can give people but you know what that's a piece of advice modelling or not that we should take with us. Well you know life. it's as I get older I'm more keen to open up about being a woman. Yeah. Um you know, the exotic, most exotic part of, of life for me is, is my day-to-day at home with my son and just, you know, just watching him grow and, boy, oh, boy, it's his turn. <laughs> I really feel like I need to grow up now. <laughs> you got to do some amazing stuff. I mean, you were looking up to likes of Naomi Campbell and Kate Moss. What was it like actually walking the same catwalk with them, being a muse for Alexander McQueen? Mm-hmm. Surreal. I think the the uh, helpful part of my job is that you don't. You, it's so fast paced. You don't have too much time to ponder and panic. Those two words are quite important to me. <laughs> Pondering and panicking. The other interesting thing. I don't know if you're aware, but um, the sort of niche part of high fashion, um, which is what I do and I enjoy doing. Yeah. Um, it's very performance related and like actors and actresses, we don't get direction. We don't have a director, or we're not. Put through our paces and we don't get rehearsals that's got to be tough but do you know what's better than tough is the adrenaline kick I yeah. come off and I don't know what I've just done <laughs> I, I say to myself what's just happened and they're not the sort of glorified people they are the real people you know it's playing people that are letting all their emotions hang out or, or it's people sort of surrendering or you know they've always been really personal roles and then Physically, I just express that. I wouldn't even say there's, there's too much emphasis on the aesthetic. It's just really freestyle. I, I've never really felt that pressure of conformity. You have done so much and there's still so much ahead of you. What would you still love to do? What would I still love to do? I'd like to get back to writing more. I think, you know, that's what I was, I was studying to do before really? I became a model, yeah. What type of um, genre? Well, you know, a lot of my family are school teachers, so it's a job that I, I know enough about, essentially, um, having heard them talking about it over the years. Uh, and that was my destiny before, before I got spotted. Wow. But it'd be really, really nice to go back to basics, because I love talking. And I like even better to be able to put it down on a piece of paper. Well, let's hope you do that and continue to share your positive message with the yes. world. Yes, let keep that going. Great to meet you. Thank you it's so much. It's very nice to meet you too. Thank you. Thank you.